Welcome to The Vibe, covering new trends in fashion and culture in China and around the world every day, Monday through Friday. Today, we start off by taking a look at the namesake ceramics that made China famous throughout the world. Authentic China, or Chinese porcelain, was first created in the Middle Kingdom during the Han Dynasty. And the finest China came from none other than the imperial kilns. The Yu Yao, which, was produced, por which produced porcelains only for the imperial families and their subsidiary regional courts. And each of these household rank was entitled to a specific collection. For instance, the empress was entitled to 1,014 pieces. A first rank concubine received 121 pieces of the imperial yellow portion with a white interior, while the second rank received 121 pieces with green dragons. Next, we follow Qi Jie in another episode of Inheritors of Intangible Cultural Heritage series to meet a new generation of inheritors who are making it possible for ordinary people to enjoy the beauty of those exclusive imperial ceramics. Take a look. <laughs> These red walls once separated the haves and have-nots, those who scraped the bottom of the barrel and those who dined on the finest china, such as those from the imperial king. Today, these walls are simply a reminder of the exceptional craftsmanship of those imperial porcelains now found in places you least expected in everyday life. Almost. Credit goes to the new generation of inheritors of the craftsmanship of the Imperial King, or Yuyao in Chinese. In the very center of Beijing is a Yuyao-themed hot pot restaurant called Wending Fu. There, I met one of the artisans behind these exquisite works. 34-year-old Xiang Yingzi is a second-generation inheritor of Yuyao, she explained the stories behind each work that graces the restaurant. Chang 对其实难度还是很大的因为瓷器不是所见即所得Power and wealth made emperors the undisputed influencers of their time. Evidence of the highest level of porcelain making across China is in the very heart of the old city in Jingdezhen. The imperial kiln factory was built during the Ming Dynasty some 650 years ago. Back then, its products were transported directly from the porcelain capital to the imperial capital, the Forbidden City. But the enormous complexity of the imperial Kong system led to its near extinction as times changed. Its fortunes fell with that of the dynasties. Then, in the early 1980s, a young man in the old city decided to resurrect the imperial king porcelain making techniques. Xiang Yingzi's father, Xiang Yuanhua, went on to establish his own brand, Yuanhua Town, after over three decades of research and experiments. Xiang Yingzi says she's deeply influenced by her father's strong sense of mission. 就是在你去恢复过去的经典的记忆的时候，那这个你就是有一个高标准在那，你必须去跟他回到他以前的这个状态。不管他是好是坏，他甚至是有了缺陷，那我们也要去把它恢复出来。所以是非常艰难的。所
with its exquisite workmanship and extensive profound brand building. The imperial kilns of the Ming and Qing dynasties are gone, but there's Yuanhua Town to continue the legacy. Xiang Yuanhua is confident Chinese craftsmanship can hold its own against that of Western products, particularly in European countries, which also have over 300 years of manufacturing history. Ce Experts agree with an even more comprehensive and objective perspective. Xie Xiaoquan is a veteran researcher and calligrapher now at the China National Academy of Painting. Previously, he worked at the collection department of the National Museum of Chinese History and the National Museum for nearly 30 years. Xie has also published many professional guidebooks on Chinese porcelain and Chinese calligraphy, including the white and blue porcelain in the transitional period. He says further improvement of the world ceramic culture lies in the differing contributions of the East and the West. China 那么它的发展是一个丰富而完备的一个物质文化体系瓷器这种它含铅量一定要很低 so far, the father and daughter team has already worked together for over 10 years with a lot to show for it. Some of their works have been permanently collected by the Shanghai World Expo and the Westlake Art Expo. And this set of porcelain reproduction for state banquets during the 1950s now serves diners in another chain restaurant in the capital. The lighting is flawless, the hot pots are sizzling, and the diners here wallow in the finest China ever produced. But I'm not quite sure whether they'd actually take notice of these incredible works of art that surround them. After all, they're here for dinner. Fresh ingredients and the range of imperial quality tableware perfectly exemplify food for the body and the beautiful white and blue tableware for the eye and the soul. CGTN, Beijing.